Do you need to be? Read the book, The Impossible, by Joy Smith, the mother of John Smith that fell through the ice. You've got, you need to be to the point that no matter the circumstances, no matter when they come and tell you, there's no way. Your finances are so out of whack, there's nobody that can help you. How many of you have been told that? Okay? How many of you have been told that? There is no way anybody can help you. You owe more than what's coming in. My goodness. Do we actually believe that? Do you not believe that that God can send somebody your way that can change your life forever? You remember the story I was talking about where the woman's getting ready to get evicted? And the guy goes, sir, I'm sorry, but listen, unless you own this foreclosed property, you can't help this woman. And the guy goes, but I do. And he goes, you see this deed? He goes, yeah. He said, whose name is that? And he read it, and he says, that can't be. That's who's getting evicted. He goes, but it can be because I just gave this to her. I bought this. And the woman starts weeping. She goes, I don't understand. Why would you do that? And he shared about how he was a little boy, and his parents had died, and he had nobody, and he was on the streets, and nobody gave him the time of day. But this woman, she gave him her rent money. She gave him her rent money when her husband said, Are you kidding me? This kid could, you know, this kid could be a con artist. And you're going to, we can't even pay our bills and you're going to give away what we got? And she gave away everything that she had in her possession to that little boy that had lost his mom and dad. And she gave him a necklace. And at the necklace, she was telling him, It's good luck. It's good luck. She encouraged him. And he said, because of you, I've accomplished all this wealth. And this is me giving back. And he said, as a little boy, I'll never be able to repay you. And she said to him, when you get on your feet and when you succeed in life, you help someone as I have helped you. Wow. Wow. Mm. Wow. See, a lot of people probably think, wow, Mike's got it made. He, he lives with a silver spoon in his mouth. Since I've been live streaming for the last four years, I've been under some of the greatest trials I've ever been in. Financially, definitely physically, spiritually, just battle after battle after battle. I got people that, and, and let me tell you something. I've had times where if I didn't reach back out to somebody immediately working a full-time job and somebody send me a message and say, will you pray for me? And maybe Facebook blocked it and I didn't get it. But then when I didn't respond because I didn't see it, brother, I sent you a prayer request. Who do you think you are not to respond to me? I thought you cared. These are some of the things that happens to me. I've had people to say, uh, for instance, I'm going to give you another one. This one really stung, but I'm just going to call it like it is. I share this with some of the pastors. Uh, this actually happened to me. I'd never say who done it. That's not the point. But I had somebody that uh, reached out to me and said, Man, your wife's a blessing. Look at everything that she does. She said, uh, so, yeah, look at everything that she does. And so somebody said, I'd like to send uh, $20 to you. You give it to your wife and you tell her to use it for whatever. That's my way of saying thank you and God bless you for her sacrificing so much time. And then the next thing I know, people talking amongst people, and it comes back to me and somebody says, and we lost people, I'm sure, on the live stream because of it. Because, you know, uh, the old saying is, the truth is the truth whether anybody believes it or not. And a lie can be a lie even if everybody believes it. But what happened was, was uh, somebody made a statement that, uh, well, somebody sent $20 to Mike. And he gave it to his wife. And I wonder what his wife done with it. And as I've said before, me and my wife both 
And this is nothing. Uh, I mean, this is reality. Pastor Darren has known me for years. I share with all of you on here. Me, uh, you know, me and my wife. Uh, if, if anybody thinks it's for the income, uh, they're sadly mistaken. It's the outcome. It's souls, 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 souls. Me and my wife have uh, have sown. I ain't saying a dollar amount, but me and my wife have sown a whole lot more than what's been sown in. I don't ask people to sow into what me and my wife do. I ask people to sow in to what God tells you to do. That's the key. If he tells you to sow in, I will tell you this, everybody that's sown in uh, to, uh, to, to what we're doing, uh, God's blessed them. But God's blessed the ones that's prayed too. God, you know, as I've shared, the Lord said for those that will embrace the miracles that he's done and give him praise, praise God. Praise God. But I just want people uh, uh, to know that this is, and I would hope that everybody would know that, it's, it's definitely, it's like a pastor told me one time, if you if you do what what I do, thinking it's going to be about income, then you're you're setting yourself up uh, for a sad day, because it's not about that. It's not about that. You know, Jesus said to him when he went out two by two, didn't he? Take absolutely nothing with you. Take nothing with you. You know, in other words, where you're welcomed in, you pray for them. Where you're not, dust your feet off and keep on moving. Keep on moving. Some of you see the enemy probably thinks, well, uh, I'll, I'll shut him down so he don't have no resources. I'll get people talking about him and so forth. And so how did I handle that? How did I handle that? I said to all of you, I want y'all to be a blessing to this ministry and this ministry and for this season don't send nothing here. See, I don't, I don't want it to be a stumbling. I don't want it to be a stumbling block. It takes resources. Now, I probably will say that if somebody wants to sow into us going into the schools and when we go to Florida, because things have uh, things have have uh, changed recently, uh, I'm not. Uh, you see me on here right now. Excuse me. It's nine oh five. Um, Working third shift and uh, the hours and everything was uh, was a, a tad much. I won't go into all the details. I'll just ask people uh, to basically just you know just pray, continue to pray. God's will be done over over my over my life. Okay, over my life. I know a lot of people would probably be saying if you was having to deal with what I'm dealing with right now be sitting here saying, well, I don't want to talk to nobody. But that's not the way it works. See, if you get thrown into the pit, even if it's not your fault, if you get thrown into the prison and it's not your fault and you're innocent, you don't have the right to blame God and say, well, God, if you was real, how could this be happening? The Lord says in his word, it rains on the just and the unjust. You've heard me say over and over, Lord, if you allow sickness to to come upon my body, I'm going to praise you. Then the next thing I know, boom. I'm told I'm type 2 diabetic and everything starts changing. It ain't slowed me down. And if I lose my life telling people about Jesus, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. My life is not mine anyway. It belongs to Jesus. Okay. And I will say this too. I know what it's like to run a company. I know what it's like to be blessed and be able to have pretty much whatever you want. And I mean that in the materialistic thing. I know what it's like to walk around in great favor and influence, politically and business-wise. There ain't no peace in that. There ain't no peace in that. Yeah, well, and see, that's, if, if, here's the thing, if we are attacking each other, I've seen a couple comments get posted on here, if we're attacking one another, that's not of God, you know what, let, let me say this, y'all, y'all ready for a truth bomb, y'all ready for a truth bomb, I'm going to show y'all something right here in a second, how many of y'all ready for a truth bomb, 
Okay? How many of y'all are ready for a truth bomb? See, Facebook's showing that, but I don't know who in the world they think they fool. They're showing on the live video almost as many shares as comments and people commenting all, all through here. I don't know why they try to be so so deceptive, but they, but they do. Yeah, I saw that. That's cool. Okay. Give y'all a truth bomb. I don't even know where this one guy is. Yeah. I'm just going to speak. I ain't even going to speak a full name. Okay? And it's this. Y'all remember not too long ago. Y'all remember not too long ago. There was a guy that all he done was come on here and terrorize me. He went behind my back, made uh, false claims, threatened me and everything else. And he was real ugly. He even started, listen to this, even started a rumor that I was responsible for somebody. It don't get no worse than that, y'all. Started a rumor that I was responsible for somebody's suicide, which was a lie. But I lost a lot of friends on Facebook because of this, because some of them bought into the lie. And all he wanted to do was hurt me, and hurt me and hurt me. And then he had a massive heart attack, I believe, and somebody asked me, will you pray for him? They got on live stream and said, will you pray for him that he'll live? And I did. And some of his family that was on here seen that. And the guy never come against me again. But let me say this. If I can pray and ask for God's grace, on a man that has done everything to destroy my life and make my life miserable and my wife and my children, why in the world would any of us attack one another? Because when you do that, here's the thing you're missing. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. If you're going to see a kingdom destroyed, it's going to be from within, not from without. Okay? The Lord said the demonic, you don't worry about the demonic. They know who you are. It's the religious spirit that you better watch out for. It's the religious spirit that you got to watch out for. Shannon, get back with me and let me know if you want to go to Florida. I'd love for you and Pastor Darren and others to go. But let me tell you this. We need more people helping in these last days. Uh, Pastor Darren, if you will reach out, Brother Shane McCall said, I'm ready. I'm in. What can I do? What can I do? And we're going to get some people. I can't do all of this as far as just like in Gaston County. Uh, we got enough. We got enough churches in Gaston County that if everybody, Amen. Oh yeah. Well, let me say this, Pastor Darren. You're gonna like this. Yeah, they're playing games. One of the groups alone that I share into and the administrators approve it every time. Listen to this. One of the groups. It's got 1.2 million people in it. I want you to think about that. 1.2 million. There's probably, in just the groups I share in totally, that approve the signal every every time I get on here. And I am uh, I don't even have to ask for permission. They immediately let it go through. And they have uh, probably about 4 to 5 million total. And so it gives you an idea of what's going on. But let me tell you this. They ain't going to stop what God's doing. What are they going to do when we go down there? And matter of fact, I listen, bring the cameras. Bring the cameras when we go to Florida. I want everybody to, to, to do this. Because when I'm down there sharing with the Jehovah Witnesses and the Muslims and the others, I, I want to make sure that everybody gets to see this. I want us to send it out to the Pope to the Congress, to the Senate, to the White House. Matter of fact, let me say this. Y'all ready for another truth bomb? Y'all ready for another truth bomb? Y'all gonna love this. Y'all gonna love this. All right. I said I wanted to do this a while back. I'm gonna show y'all something. Y'all don't go nowhere. Y'all just hold tight.
I'm going to give you two. Number one, John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me will do the same things I've done and even greater. I hope we get that. He that believeth on me will do the same things and even greater. Okay? For the most part, I think there was one time that Jesus prayed for a man twice. Uh, it's the first time he said, I see men as trees walking. And then the second time he prayed for me, he saw clearly. So the problem wasn't, the problem wasn't Jesus and his faith. The problem was the one he was praying for. Okay? Because you rest assured, Jesus had the faith, no doubt about it. Okay? Smith Wigglesworth, the apostle of faith, said this. If you have to ask more than once, then you're struggling with your unbelief. Now, somebody might say, well, how dare you tell me that? Well, I'm just telling you the truth. We all have that problem. We all have that problem. I don't think there's anybody <laughs> out here that can say that I've never, amen, that I've never I've struggled with that. Yeah, we're going to be down in sometime in January. I don't know when, but I'm going to get up with Pastor David Raymer. But I know it's got to be sooner or later because I need to get down there and share this. He's offered me an opportunity to share my mother's miracle of how God raised her up from being brain dead. And I'm going to do this. Okay? So I'm going to be down in uh, Florida. I hope to get to go to uh, uh, TBN and uh, meet somebody down there. So... Martha's like, I'm staying home. I don't know. So, but anyway. So, uh, I don't even know where Port St. Lucia, Florida is. But we're going to be down near, uh, nor, near Orlando. So, anyway. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let <laughs> me see if I can reach out to the others. Yes, yeah, she's still struggling with her with her cough. You know, I was sick for a couple couple days. <laughs> and I know that with me it was Lord Lord just just let me be okay so that I can share. There was times last year when I was sick that I couldn't even talk unless I was live streaming. And the minute that I quit live streaming, my voice went away. And when I live streamed the next day, my voice came back. God allowed me to speak only during that time when we was on here sharing. Okay? So let me... Share something else here. I'm seeing all of these posts of these children missing all over the world, and I know we got a problem with uh, trafficking and other things that's happening to these kids. Uh, and Lord Jesus, we pray that this nonsense will stop. That kids, that people would quit doing this to these kids. These kids would uh, not be being abducted. It's like that movie Taken. Uh, this is a reality of what's going on when it comes to money. When it comes to money, uh, it's just even right here in my backyard, it just says 11-year-old girl after leaving home, they can't find her. And that's sad. Don't take your eyes off your children. Eleven-year-old girl, right here in our backyard, and she's gone. Right. Yeah, so sad. So sad that this would happen. 11 years old and she's gone. Lord Jesus, we pray for the safe return of this 11 year old child. 
that belongs to somebody, somebody's daughter. And I got three daughters. I cannot imagine what that would be like to lose your daughter. Sharing to a couple more groups. more and it knocked me out again. Y'all share if you haven't shared, share and invite, share and invite. See, uh, this just brings things into perspective, does it not? I had a, listen to this, I got up last night early hours of the morning. This is how discernment works for me. I get up uh, early hours of the morning and I'm led upstairs, upstairs in the house. And I look up and I said, oh my gosh, I must have a busted water line up in the attic in the insulation somewhere, but I don't know where. And the water's dripping through the sheetrock. And I'm like, man, if that ceiling falls, I don't know what I'm going to do. So then I crawl up in the attic. I can't find what it is. And then I come downstairs. And about 5.30 in the morning, uh, the Lord leads me to, to believe on, on here. In other words, get on the live stream. Somebody needs to hear. So I got a problem I can't figure out upstairs. I'm going to have to wait in the early hours of the morning. And so I get on the live stream. And people, not many people on, but there's people on that are hurting and the Lord reminds me that, yeah, you got a water leak somewhere. But there's somebody on here that's fighting for their life. They're struggling with suicide. And I get on here and I look at the posts on my phone. And people reaching out from all over the country. Okay? <clears throat> Pleading for help. Yeah, somebody sent a post, Teresa where they showed a van and it had a lock from the outside. It's saying that if you see a van that's got a lock on the outside of the side door and the back door with tinted windows, you might want to think seriously about this. And, and let me tell you, pay attention. Pay attention to your uh, surroundings, okay? Pay attention to your surroundings. You never know that you might be stumbling on something where somebody's trying to take somebody. Man, I tell you, it's a, it's a shame. I, I remember one time that I seen many years ago a van going down the road, and it was just like something tugging at my heart that something wasn't right. And I didn't, I didn't say nothing. And then I've had other times that I've actually... I've actually even got somebody off the road that was driving in the wrong lane and I just prayed God have them to make a left turn there <laughs> right there before somebody gets killed and they took a left turn believe it or not they took a left turn y'all and they took a left turn and they tried to turn around and head back out to the main road I blocked the road I, I took my car and blocked the road. They didn't try to run me over. They just stopped right where I was. And I said, excuse me, I noticed that you was all over the road. Something was not right. And they looked at me like I need to go. And I was like, no, I can't. And I know some people probably say, you, you could have been shot, brother. I said, uh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't let you leave. There's something that's not right. And their speech was really slurred and so forth. And I told them, I said, you're either high on drugs or you're jacked up on medication. And the person looked at me and said, can you help me? Can you get me some help? I need help. And I said, yeah. Actually, I'd already called 911 and I made the comment, help is on the way. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a bunch of police cars come flying in. <laughs> and they was like, how in the world did you get this person off the road? 
I said, I prayed that they would take a left turn right here just long enough that I could pin them in and they couldn't get back on the main road before somebody got killed. And do you know that nobody got hurt, nobody got in an accident, somebody could have been killed because when I seen the person driving up the wrong side of the lane and crossing the lane and I mean it was bad but I said you know what God get them off the road make them turn right here make them turn right here and I and I took and let me tell you not only did I tell them they wasn't going nowhere the car was running I reached through the window turned the keys off of the car and held the keys and told them set in the car you're not leaving nowhere this is for your good and for everybody else's good. We're not going to see somebody get killed on this highway. And I was told later that the person was jacked up on uh, pain pills and everything else and didn't have a clue where they were. Now, God is such an amazing God that when I come on that road and that person pulled out on that road, I was right there behind them. And nobody, nobody got it. Nobody got killed, nobody got hurt. Now, people get hurt all the time, unfortunately, but we need to pay attention to our surroundings, do we not? Somebody's probably thinking, what's Mike getting ready to do? Mike's just looking to see where he did not share into so that I can do this, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. I ain't gonna be on here like I say much longer. Y'all just keep on sharing, keep on uh, sharing and inviting. Uh, as Pastor Darren said yesterday, he said, "Man, that's awesome. We had five Muslims got in here and they liked it. You know, we got more Muslims that like the live stream than we do the religious spirit." And as I shared the other day, you best believe that relationship will trump religion every time. Kristen Cox, Debbie Mull, uh, Venus, good to see you on here. Uh, yep, God is good. Melissa Porter, amen, good to see you on here. Amen, who, who else? Yeah, Ginger, you know, yeah, Shannon has been there, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what, I even... Uh, I even had somebody, I mean, even all the police was like, I can't believe you got this person off the road. And you should, you know, I mean, then I was told, actually, when I called 911, they said, don't do nothing else. Don't endanger yourself. You could get hurt bad. And when they turned around and they started coming the other way in the car, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And they could have run over my car, but I put my car and I put it across the road and I blocked them. They wasn't no way they was coming back through the side road to the main road. And they stopped. And I just walked up to them and I said, what's going on here? You all over the road and you could have been killed. You could have killed somebody. And, uh, and their speech was real slurred. And I told them, I said, there's one or two things. You're either high on drugs or you're on medication. I said, which one is it? And then the person said, I need help. Can you help me? And I said, yeah. They asked me to call, they actually call, asked me to call their family member to come get them, that they realize I've got no business on the road. And I told them, I said, that's why I've got you blocked in here. You're not going back to the road. You're going to make it back to your home eventually. You're going to make it alive. You're not going to be killed out here. And that's exactly what happened. <clears throat> that's exactly what happened. Amen. And you know, just like on that same road, Come down the road and there's baby shadow laying in the middle of the road as a kitten that fit in the palm of your hand. Man, that is so pretty when I look at that picture of her. You know what? She is so comfortable that many times on live stream when she comes in here, she hops up on my shoulder. Now she's so big, she can't do that. And she'll hop up on the bed with me when I lay down to take a nap and so forth. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in a day that I call the last, we're definitely in the last days, y'all. We don't have a whole lot of time, and we got to make the most of it. If you're on here, 
Put your prayer request up here. I love that. Sister Carol, I'll share with your daughter last night that you said, oh man, send her to me. There's been times that my wife and Shadda bit her and my wife's like, honey, box her up and send her to Sister Carol. Uh, she's uh, she's sweet now. Yeah, Martha says she's sweet now. She's sweet until you'll just be just like with me. She'll be rubbing her paw on the side of my face, putting her face up against me, and then all of a sudden she'll reach right around and grab me on the nose and just light into me. But let me let me say this. Um, God is so good. God is so good. He's blessed us all with amazing pets. Amen. We're fortunate. Y'all, uh, let me also, I'm trying to look and see where, I think I know where I'm at now. I'm trying to share in all the groups. Wanda Pike says, pray for my daughter. Uh, Wanda, we are lifting your daughter up for prayer. Uh, Wanda, let me ask you something. I think I've seen something recently from you too. Are we not friends on Facebook or something happened? I've got people that reach out to me and say, well, we were friends, but I accidentally deleted you, so I sent you another one. Wanda, somebody sent me a friend request. I don't know how long ago, but it's got your name on it. <coughs> I thought we were friends, but just if somebody on here, if something's happened, you accidentally deleted me. I know I hadn't deleted nobody, but if you accidentally deleted me, just send me something and say, hey, Brother Mike, I, I didn't mean to. I accidentally deleted you. Will you accept the new one that I've got out there? And we'll do that, okay? All right, how about that? We'll, we'll do that. Amen. I'm just so glad to see Shannon Duncan uh, back on here because, like I say, he likes to drive, and I think that, I think that would be cool. If me, him, and if me, him, and Pastor Darren got to go to uh, Florida or Tennessee on a ministry trip, okay? I, Martha says she wants to go too. I tell you, when Martha wants to go, there was somebody that said, "God bless you from Hawaii. We love hearing you." Uh, if somebody ever decides that we're supposed to go minister in Hawaii, I'm sure my wife will be all about that one. Uh, so, anyway, but you know what my dad said? Son, before you go into these other countries, America needs a mighty move of God. So I'm believing in, so Pastor Darren, and this is where we need some help by some other people. Uh, we can never have enough help in building the kingdom of God. We can never have enough help in building the kingdom of God. Okay? <laughs> So if somebody, okay, so Wanda, you said you sent it. All right, I'll go back and see if I can find it, and I will accept it. Okay, Wanda, I get a lot of people that I'm hesitant after I've done accepted one because I don't want, I don't know if somebody's account's been hacked or so forth. So, but if it's somebody sending me another one to replace one, just let me know. Okay, just let me know. And we'll make it right. We'll get it right. Okay? I got several more groups. It's only like to get five at a time. Amen? But again, we need all the help we can get to go into the schools, to go into the uh, churches, because uh, I, don't have a, uh, I don't have a staff that helps me set up appointments and so forth. It's just me and Darren and some others that are helping and so we're believing for the schools. We're believing for some of the cities. And if somebody's wanting us to come, just like whether it's Tennessee or whatever, or uh, like Evangelist Johnson saying Alabama, uh, just uh, just let us know. I do know that I am definitely in January <coughs> going to Florida. I also want to, and and I understand this. This might be after the first of the year sometime. But let me tell you this. I definitely know what it's like to be in Washington, D.C. And if I've got some people that would go with me to Washington, D.C. to go meet with some of these uh, political leaders and express our concern, I'll go. I used to do this all the time when I'm building on subway stores. I used to make a habit 
seemed like about every quarter I was in Washington, D.C. meeting with people. So uh, I've met uh, with a lot of a lot of the people. That's why I've shown some of y'all the uh, certificates that I was given from the governor and from the president, former president of the United States. So I've been in I've been in the rooms with the political leaders, and I've been given an opportunity to speak uh, with U.S. senators and U.S. congressmen. I know some people probably say, "Well, man, I'd love. I wish I could see that happen." Uh, just been fortunate to have seen that. And then when somebody said, "Mike, when will you use your giftings for what really counts?" and that's building the kingdom of God. That's where we're at right now. Okay, that's where we're at right now, and that's what we need to do. And we need to be up there. You know what? Man, I tell you what. I wish there was about 70, 80 people on here right now as there was last night. How many of y'all understand, okay, what is impossible with man is possible with God? That's the word. How many of you understand that when you got God on your side, you can't lose? Y'all know that? When you got God on your side, you've got the victory. Do you understand that? Okay? Now, let me say this. How many of you understand truthfully? You know, you know why a lot of people are really furious and so forth. Okay, somebody made the comment the other day and said this. When you got leaders that believe morally, you know what they should be saying? The problem's not with me being a morally leader. The problem is with me. <sighs> Man.